Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about shoeing elastic and how to use it on your sewing machine. What is shoeing elastic? Well it's this cord elastic which you can see here and you can buy it on small spools or large spools. You can use it in your sewing machine, in your overlocker or in your cover stitch machine. These three coloured spools here I bought in my local supermarket. I'm not sure they're the best quality, but I've used them on and off for different projects. I've also got Gutemann shearing elastic, which I find to be a really good quality. And I've bought a giant spool as well for when I'm using it on my overlocker or my cover stitch machine. And I'll be showing those techniques in another video. In this video, I'm going to be using this shearing elastic, which is from Fabric Godmother. This type of elastic is about 0.5 millimetres thick and you can use it to create that gathered or shearing effect that you see on summer tops or blouses or perhaps on sleeves. You can see it here on a cuff that I've just made and you can see the elastic on the inside and it creates that nice little gathered ruffled cuff effect at the end of my sleeve. You can use it also in a similar way for the cuffs on trouser legs or you can use it to create shaping at the waist. I'm going to show you three different techniques in this video. The first one I'll show you how you can work in lines, back tacking at either end. The second one I'll show you how you can work in rows but with one continuous line of stitch. So going back and forth across the rows but only stopping and when you get right to the end of your final line of stitching. And the third method is how to work in the round forming a spiral with your line of stitching. When you're using shearing elastic on your sewing machine, you transfer the shearing elastic from the spool onto a bobbin and the elastic is used in the bobbin only with normal thread placed on the top. You can try winding it using the automatic winder on your machine, but I find it much better to hand wind the elastic onto the bobbin in order to get an even feed and also to make sure I don't overstretch it. To wind the bobbin, simply transfer elastic from the spool to the bobbin. You can stretch it ever so slightly as you wind it, or you may find it's best to not do that. You can experiment with this. I like to just stretch it ever so slightly as I'm winding it on. You want to make sure you fill the bobbin up as much as you can because I find that the shearing elastic doesn't last as long as your regular thread and don't overfill so the bobbin won't fit in. Cut off a good length so that you can feed that into your machine and then have enough here to pull through to the top. I have a top loading machine but it will work the same on a front loader. I'm going to place my shearing elastic in the top as I would any normal thread and then wind the hand wheel one full rotation and bring that elastic up to the top and then through to the back. On a front loading machine just thread the machine as you would do normally. You may find you need to loosen the tension slightly but this is a bit of experimentation so only do that if you feel you need to. I found on my machine that I haven't needed to alter the tension at all but this can also depend on the type of elastic you're using, so it might be a combination of different elastics, different tensions. I'm using this Chinami MS2522 limited edition sewing machine. I've turned my stitch length right up to about three and three quarters, so it's almost up to the highest number, the longest stitch length. You might find on your machine you need to set to the longest stitch length, you might find that maybe three to three and a half works best, again it's about experimenting. Before sewing onto your actual project, do a few test runs first to make sure that the tension, the stitch length and everything is set up correctly. Use the fabric that you're using for your actual project as well. I'm going to start as you would do normally, 
lower the presser foot, take a couple of stitches back and forth and then work to the end of the fabric. And back tack again. And then when you finish, pull out the threads and make sure you allow the elastic to ping back before you start cutting. So I need to make sure that this is much longer else the elastic will ping back into the machine and I'll have to re-thread the bobbin again. So once you feel you've got a long enough piece, cut leaving a tail and then take a look at your work. So I've got a nice amount of elastication there and I'm going to carry on working in rows, back tacking at either end until I've done four or five rows on my test piece. For the second line, I'm going to just use the edge of the presser foot as a guide, keeping the edge of the presser foot in line with my line of stitches. You can mark lines onto the fabric if you want to, but I just find this method is much quicker. You may find that you need to pull the fabric taut in front of the machine as you work. And as the fabric feeds through, pull the fabric taut at the back. see it's giving a really lovely shearing bunched gathered effect and that's going to look really nice at the waistline and on the cuffs of the dress that I'm making. But what should I do with all these thread ends? Because if I cut them I run the risk of the elastic just working its way out of the fabric so I'm going to knot each of these and I'll show you how. Let's just take the first one at the top so if I pull on that top thread and then just use a pin or something to help me just pull that top thread, the green thread, through to the wrong side. And then I can tie a knot with these two threads. and that will make sure that they don't come undone. You can do a few more knots if you want to make sure it's super secure and then just cut the threads, leaving a little tuft there. And that's what I'm going to do for all of my thread ends on my actual project. I'm not gonna bother on this sample piece, but that's what I could do on my project. If you want to make this even more gathered, take it over to the ironing board and set up the iron to steam. If you place your iron over the top and just give it a bit of a steam, that will help the elastic to bunch up a bit further and make it even more gathered. The second technique I'll show you is how you can just work in a continuous line without stopping and starting apart from at the beginning and at the end of your section of shearing. So start as before. And I'm going to work all the way to the end of my piece of fabric, pivot, come along the edge and then work back again, kind of going in a sort of zigzag pattern back and forth along the lines until I get to the end of my final line of shearing when I'll just back tack. This technique can be a bit quicker and it will mean that you've only got two sets of thread ends at the beginning and the end of your line of stitching. get to the end of your line of stitching, leave the needle in the fabric and lift up the presser foot and we're going to just pivot and take a couple of stitches up the edge. So I'll just take three stitches along the edge and then leave the needle in the fabric, lift up the presser foot, pivot again and then we're going to work our way back along this edge. 
If you want to take more stitches to create a bigger gap, you can do so. I'm going to use the edge of the presser foot again as a guide and then sew all the way to the end of this line. And then when you get to the end, just back tack as normal. And then pull your threads out and make sure you pull that elastic so that it's not going to ping back into this machine. Give it an extra yank and then cut your threads. I get the same effect that I did before, but without all the tail ends. I've just got two sets. If I pull my fabric out taut, you can see the patterns that my lines of stitching are making. It's going back and forth in one continuous line from beginning to end. The final technique that I'll show you is the one that I've used here on this cuff. And I'm working in the round on this cuff. So I've already sewn the seam on my sleeve. I've turned the hem and then I've worked in a spiral. You can see I started here close to the hem and I worked all the way round. And then when I got back to the beginning, I then just angled my stitching slightly in and then carried on with the next round and so on. So working in a spiral until I got to the end. And I find that's a nice way to work when you're working in the round. So you again, you don't have all the tail ends of threads. You just have the thread where you start and the thread where you finish. And from the right side, you can't really tell that that's the technique that I've used. Unless you look really, really closely along the seam line where you can see the beginning of the stitching at the top here and the ending of the stitching there. But once it's gathered, it doesn't really look any different to the other techniques. So I prefer this method when I'm working in the round. And I'll show you how that works on my second sleeve. I'm going to start by taking this section off my machine so that I'm just left with the free arm. I'll place the sleeve onto the free arm I'm going to start from the sleeve seam and I'm starting two centimetres in from the edge so that that will leave me with that nice ruffle at the edge. So start at the seam line, take a few stitches back and forth like before and then work all the way round to my starting point. back at the beginning just ignore this extra thread here don't cut it off because you'll want it to tie the threads later but just angle your stitching from this point and start to come slightly to the left of this first line and once the edge of the presser foot starts to be in line with your original stitch line then you can angle back round and then use that line as your guide and then carrying on working in a spiral until you've completed the number of stitch lines necessary. In this case, I've chosen to do five lines of shearing. That's my last line of stitching, so I'm going to just back tack and finish off there. And don't forget to pull that thread out, pull the elastic, give yourself plenty of slack and then cut the threads. I can tie the knots in the ends like I did before or if you want to make it a bit neater tie the knots and then bury the thread ends into the fabric. And 
then just work those thread ends into the seam allowance. So I'm just going to bury them inside that seam allowance there and just make sure that's not going to show through to the right side. And then once you've done that, just trim the ends off. And then I can do the same with this one here. 